think more than anything, it's it's about enjoying whatever the process yeah. is. And I think if you're enjoying being an actor, being a, if you're enjoying being an actor, but you're not getting a lot of work, but you're really enjoying it, you're succeeding. Oh my God. I'm so excited for the, for our, our guest today. We have on actor and writer Peyton McDavid. Peyton, thanks for being on the show. Absolutely. I'm so excited to be here. Well, this is really cool. I mean, you've acted in, in films, you've acted in big TV shows. Um, you've been a writer as well. So like you, you've, you've done the whole filmmaking spectrum, which I think is awesome. <laughs> I and, have. and now you're an editor and a writer on a book. And I want to mm-hmm. kind of uh, I think it's called 101 Reasons Why. Is that correct? Yes, 101 Reasons Why. And it's an entire universe. But uh, specifically, the book, this book is 101 Reasons Why I Lost My Homework Again. That's awesome. So <laughs> I want to get a little bit of your origin story and kind of what led you to the project. And then we'll just kind of talk about inspirations and maybe a little bit difference between working in television and how that crosses over into the book. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, so I grew up in Boston, um, big Boston Irish Catholic family, you know, didn't know the difference between a wedding and a funeral till I was 12. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I ended up doing my undergraduate at Harvard and then I told my parents I wanted to be an actor, which is, you know, was, was quite a conversation. <laughs> um, you know, I actually didn't know if it was absolutely what I wanted to do, but I knew I was going to regret not finding out. So, um, my parents got on board. They are great. And I spent the better part of my 20s out here acting. Um, and sort of at the peak of my acting career, I decided it wasn't quite right for me, um, which is another great conversation with my parents. Um, I was a working actor at the time, and uh, it was actually kind of stressful when you sort of you sort of hit that spot because you have no other safety net. Um, and I had started writing a little bit. And as I leaned a little bit more into writing, I realized it was that it was, it was like my dream job was running parallel to what I thought my dream job was. Wow. Um, so I really embraced the writing piece. I had an incredible mentor. Um, I really enjoyed my classes and it just fit better. So, I mean, also there was one specific audition that pushed me over the edge. I was, uh, I had just been on a show in Hawaii and, you know, so therefore I was like, oh my gosh, I made it. This is incredible. And then the show got canceled and I was on a plane back to LA so Uh fast and had nothing to do with me. You know, it had absolutely nothing to do with me, had nothing to do with how, you know, what, whatever shape I was in as an actor. It's a lot like uh, an actor, being an actor is a lot like being an athlete or a musician. If you're practicing a lot, you're really, you're really sharp. And when you're rusty, you're really rusty. Um, Maybe not if you're Meryl Streep, she could probably sleep for years and then still show up and be incredible Whips it um, out. yeah exactly that wasn't me um so anyway I was back in LA and weeks later I was going to an audition I think it was in Glendora I'm still not even sure where that is, where that is um the traffic was so bad my car was basically in park and I was going out for vampire hooker number four and I was like I I was like you know what I don't even want to be a vampire hooker number one what am I doing And so I, at that moment, you know, I was like, I may never win an Oscar. I may never even get recognized as a writer, but I can write something better than this for people who love to act. So that was a very salient moment uh, and a real turning point for me. And so that was it. I turned the car around uh, after waiting another hour in traffic, but yes. Oh my God. LA traffic is the worst. (laughs) It's terrible. Um, I have a whole story. I will not go into it, but um (laughs) I, I I always love to say every actor becomes a writer eventually. Oh yeah, acting is a gateway drug. <laughs> it's like all of us all of us here start with that and then end up doing something else. <laughs> that is hilarious. All right, yeah. So walk me into and, and you've written you've written on shows and yeah. um and you've and you've you've got your work out there um some Hallmark yeah. movies some mm-hmm, Christmas yeah. stuff which I actually <laughs> yeah. want to talk to you about eventually. So Great. tell me about like what led you into editing 100 reason why, editing and writing 100 reasons why 101 reasons why um this was this was a great uh trajectory actually so uh i had worked with neko productions with Lorit and her husband actually um liron who is a dreamworks animator um they're both so incredibly talented so i'd worked with them on a previous project 
and then sort of became their go-to person of like, hey, can you take a look at this pitch? Hey, can you take a look at that? And especially with Lirano as he was going into to pitch some more ideas to DreamWorks. Um, and I just, I loved working with them. They are so creative. They're so excited. And Lurie called me one day and said, I have this wild, crazy director friend and he has an outside the box idea. And so she's like, will you help us contain it? Um, and I said, yeah, I, I will do that. So send it on over. So it was, you know, at the time, maybe a paragraph and it actually was a different story. It was late for school again. Oh, um, and we, and I loved it. It just like totally resonated with me. Like I could just, you know, see myself in third grade running out the door with violin and hanging out in one hand and <laughs> grabbing an Eggo waffle in the other, like never making the bus on time. Um, and, it's, and I just, I met Ophir, the creator, and had a great conversation with him and really identified with the main character. So, because um, I was also hyper curious and kind of aloof and like in my own little dreamer world. So um, that that really hit my heart um, in a different way. And so I, I started working on it and started developing in the world, the bigger world and helping yeah. like develop the characters a little bit. And then we built it we built it out in a big way and then we found out there was a show just like it that came out of australia it was called nate is late and it was like the same thing and oh, it was no. devastating i know um it was pretty it was really heartbreaking so we had to take a we had to have a really you know reset moment and i think every i think every writer has experienced this something you've oh, written yeah. that you care a lot about and you're like oh my god there you know there's two snow whites coming out and right then now then you see two. the trailer for it yeah <laughs> and you're like oh um, so those are, you know, it's kind of a rite of passage and it, we, we did our best to take it in stride. And then we tried to regroup and come up with other story engines that we thought were as strong. And we were, we had, we had a hard time with that. And then finally, um, it hit me that it could be, we were trying to pivot into this, the homework space a little bit. And I, I was worried that it was too small of a story engine. Um, but that it worked for a bunch of episodes, um, episodes yeah. maybe. Um, so that's when it was like, oh my gosh why don't we do an entire 101 reasons why universe where it's like 101 it. reasons why I can't um, have a sleepover or I can't, uh, I'm too sick to go to school today or I'm the stinky kid in gym class. It's all these things that kids I are trying it. to overcome. I know it's really, it, 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 it gives the main character the chance to be the hero in their own story. Yeah. So they tell this wild adventure why they can't do something. Um, and usually the, it's a really sweet lesson in there. It's like, you know, oh, Danny, who's the main character of uh, Leaper, I'm oh, sorry, Danny, who's the main char character of I Lost My Homework Again. He, all of his stories are about saving people and helping people. Aww. I know he's such a sweet character. I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed working on him with Ophir and developing this world a lot. So I think yeah. that is so awesome having this expanded universe that you can mm -hmm. really tap into. Um, and the yeah. concept is great. So, I mean, you mentioned that um, you had created all of this stuff before and then you and then you found out it had already been done. And yeah. what I've noticed with my own work, and, and this is what I want to kind of ask you about, is when that happens to me, I, I, I table it and then I end up working yeah. on a project. And inevitably, I'll end up on a project and I'll be like, well, I bet I can cannibalize this stuff I've already written. Yeah. Yes. So yes. I'll go through and I will just kind of like with a scalpel, I'll just start slicing <laughs> yeah. out like certain things, <laughs> repurposing it because you've written it, you've developed it. So is that mm -hmm. something that you kind of found that you can save? Um, you know, we do, we were able to save a lot of it because um, because the pivot was not so far away. But but I do identify with that uh, that sort of moment of okay. I got to put this on the, on the back burner. And then all of a sudden yeah. something else comes up later and you're like, that character works here or, and then it's easier. You know, when you said come in with a, sc a scalpel, it's like, it's so hard when you've just finished something or you're working on something to kill your darlings. But when you've had a little space from it, you're like, okay, I love that scene. That's the best scene I've ever written. I can leave it on the cutting room floor because I'm going to take that other part of it. And you're just, you know, you're, you're more versatile or more uh, resilient in that capacity. No, absolutely. And I think that, you know, I like to say no writing is ever wasted. You know, it's either a learning opportunity or it's practice, but it's also it's also a material that you can mine. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I think that's awesome. So uh, I mean, when I'm when I when I 
when I've read about the book and I and I've kind of did my research on the book, I mean, it just it just screams my kid. My kid's older now, but that's yeah. totally he was <laughs> yeah. a kid with the messy hair, you know, mm -hmm. that that's that's a little bit quirky like his dad. And um, and so I can just see him represented. Mm -hmm. And what I like about this concept and and this this series that you guys are working on is like when I was a kid, there was nothing that ever spoke to me outside of like hitchhiker's guide oh so, yeah great book. you know like but anything else i ever read is like yeah that's not yeah me, you know but right. this i feel like there's a whole generation of kids that will get this and i think that's so awesome i'm so thank you so much for saying that that really uh resonates with us and and our mission and i i agree these are the all of us on the team like we're all such dreamers i think that and we're all such like a little outside the box um and if in a really fun way. And I think that these are books that we wish we had when we were kids. So we're writing them for next the next generation. So what do you think the future holds? Do you guys see this moving into animation? Do you see this going into live action? Animation for sure. Um, and okay. yes, 100%. I would love to, you know, Ophir is already, um, you know, digging into the next few, few uh, volumes of the graphic novel um i'm pitching ideas as well and then what we we have a bunch of other episode ideas that pivot into um a t to tv shows that follow a yeah. different character in mr gilbert's class so you know the tv series might follow libby and libby has trouble with blank um and that's where we we hope to create a much wider you know books TV yeah. shows, maybe a feature at some point. And that's the most amazing thing about NECA Productions is they have the capacity to do all of this. They are inc yeah. like incredible um, company, a, you know, animation company. They really, they do beautiful work. And um, yeah. we have the capacity to do it all in-house. Uh, wow. It's just whether finding the right distribution, distribution partner. But that is the plan. I mean, that's incredible. And really the concept to me, like just from an outsider's perspective, it screams anthology, mm -hmm. which, which I love. I mean, anthologies are... <laughs> are not too common. I mean, you have a couple of them, but I think when the concept is done right, like this one is, you can, you can pull out those side characters and give them all, their own story and everybody can run through that journey. Um, do you find that writing a little bit more difficult or do you find it a little bit more freeing, be able to just to kind of go wherever your will takes you? Oh, um, like in terms of using a character that already exists in a different yeah. space, I actually love it. Um, okay. Just because you know when you write when you write a feature or you write something, you might have this great smaller character, and you're like, "Gosh, I want to hear about their interior life." Um, right. So this is an opportunity to do that, and I think that's exciting to me. I also really I like rules, but I also like to break them. Um, <laughs> so starting with a good set of rules is really fun for me because I, you know, I can be like, okay, this is Libby. She is a little bit more shy. She's very astute. She's, and take all these qualities and then go build her world. Um, I find it really exciting. It. Yeah. Do you, do you, um, yeah, I, I just, I love the idea of expanded universe. And I, and I, <laughs> I wonder like how much time are you spending really kind of developing these characters so that there is a future for them? And I, cause I think that's the part for some writers out there that can be overwhelming where they're like, Oh, I don't know where to go with this character. Oh, um, I feel the opposite mostly because I feel such a kindred spirit with the kids in this class. Um, and because we, at one point, Libby was actually the main character when we were back in late for school again, world. Okay. Um, so she is really well developed. And then we have a few other characters that we've we've spent a lot of time on. And here's the most amazing thing about animation. It actually takes a long time. Yeah. So while, you know, after we had solidified the script for um, The Snotty Snail, which is the, the first episode, first volume, um, there was a lot of time where the animators were off doing what they do. And I was kind, I kind of had some downtime to think about what was next. So... Uh, I could be working in tandem on what the next piece was. Do you do a writer's room or is it like you're just sitting there, you've got your board and you're going for it? This one, this at the beginning here was, has mostly been Ophir and me. Um, okay. So it's been, you know, a lot of passing things back and forth. There are times where I will lead and he'll follow, um, okay. which, is which is really fun because Ophir paints in these really, really big colors. And so I can kind of come in and be like, 
how do we make this insane storyline work? <laughs> and then vice versa, I can pitch an idea and he'll be like, oh, 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 what about? And he'll build on it in a really uh, exciting way. So um, there's been a really good uh, symbiosis between the two of us. Um, and then we kind of go back and forth. One of us usually follows, one of us usually leads. And then I clean up all of Ophir's um, grammar mistakes. And then we <laughs> then we go to print. <laughs> it really is about relationships though, isn't it? I mean, uh, it sounds like a relationship working with somebody that you really enjoyed working with has brought you into this yeah. amazing journey. Yes. And that extends beyond just, you know, Ophir, who's the creator and Larit, who's the, the executive producer. Um, you know, we have an incredible, Ariel is the project manager. He is, has a thousand spinning plates and he's managing, all, you know, Beata and Tyrone. And wow. um, it's just, he's doing such an incredible job. So everybody on the team, I think is, is kind of excited and, yeah, we, we it's really rare to get that kind of chemistry across the board. I love to have um, creatives like yourself on here because I think it's so important for screenwriters and writers out there to be multi-hyphenates. Um, and somebody like yourself who has really been in the business um, yeah. and has and has grown her career, what kind of advice do you have for someone out there looking to expand their their skill set? I certainly agree with you that it is really helpful to know and understand what everyone else is doing on set. When I first moved to Los Angeles, I would volunteer to be in, to help with all of my friends' short films. And like this meant holding the boom, which I was terrible at. But let me tell you, if you hold the boom while someone doesn't know their lines and you're sitting there with your arms above your head, you know, for take after take after take, you will never show up to set without knowing your lines. Um, wow. you just have such an appreciation for what other, what everybody else is doing. And there's so many moving parts and they all have to work really well. And then on top of that, you have to capture a little magic for anything to be good. It's so hard to get anything made. Um, so I definitely recommend if, if someone's coming out here to explore the industry, trying on a lot of hats, because also the hat you think that might be the right one for you might not. And that was my, you know, that was my story was, I thought I wanted to be an actor. And then I dug into writing and I was like, oh this is where I'm supposed to be. Um, wow. Yeah, and just appreciation, the appreciation I have for what actors do now. And because I know I've been there and yeah, um, I really appreciate and admire the work that goes into what they do. I appreciate the work. I've, I've done a lot of producing and producing is really, a, it's, I mean, it's being a massive taskmaster, uh, being really organized and um, yeah. and not getting any sleep. So I really appreciate what they do as well. Um, down to everybody, every everybody top to bottom on set is really vital to the success of a project. So I recommend people dig in and try to do try to do a lot of things so they know what they want to do and do appreciate yourself, what everyone else does. Do you find yourself ever thinking of trying to go back to acting on your own terms? Uh, <laughs> um, not really. Um, I don't miss it as much as I, I thought I was going well, to. Okay. I will say, though, I do. I didn't end on a great note. So only, only because I had, you know, I kind of pivoted away and I was really enjoying writing. And also I think I was finding the path to finding work a little bit easier with writing. Yeah. I, I don't want to say easier. That's the wrong word. It is not easy. That's another, you know, I don't want to give anyone a false sense that it is easy to make a living doing this. Cause it's, um, it's not, it's really not. Um, but my, a friend of mine asked me to, to be in a film of his and I had been out of the game a little bit for a while and I was so rusty and I'm, I'm and it really shows in my performance. So I was really like unhappy with that performance and unhappy with that being the final note. So at some point I will probably want to go back and do one role, work my butt off on it and just like not try to knock it out of the park and then be like, okay, now I can really feel good about um, that cap on the career. I find that, and, and maybe this is, what you were what you were hinting at is that it's uh is is you, you say it's 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 not easier to get a writing gig but i think when you find your purpose it doesn't feel as much and you know please correct me if this is the wrong verbiage i'm using here but <laughs> it doesn't feel like like as much of a burden yeah i mean yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I think more than anything, it's it's about enjoying whatever the process yeah. is. And I think if you're enjoying being an actor, being a, if you're enjoying being an actor, but you're not getting a lot of work, but you're really enjoying it, you're succeeding. 
Yeah. So many actors I know are miserable because they're not working enough. Oh man. Um, you know, and same with writers. I know so many miserable yeah, oh, yeah. working enough. And I mean, barring the strike. Um <laughs> but uh, but um the ones I know who are really happy and with, with what they're doing, whether or not they're making thirty thousand a year or three hundred thousand a year doing it, like you're winning if you're enjoying your life while you're doing what exactly. you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. I tell people that for me, screenwriting is the best, worst thing I've ever done. hundred <laughs> percent. I know. I love it. But at the same time, it can be like, oh my God, 